Ready? Okay, so, like queso, cheese, again. Uh, story. I, okay, here's the thing. The guy that was going to do the doc, he's, I'm just not putting all my uh, thing in one thing. Ha <laughs> ha! Does that make sense? All my eggs in one basket. I'm not just, you know, doing, I, so I'm talking to this other guy. Because it, it occurred to me. That where's the biggest metal audience? Metal. Where do they always sell out every single band? I don't care if they're Kiss or Metallica or whoever. Slayer. Where do they always have massive crowds? Mexico, South America, all of that. So, I got a guy that wants to do a documentary really bad about me and my bands and stuff. But he's, he can't speak English. Super nice guy, I love him. So I said, you know what? Do it. But do it in Spanish and market it to everybody in South America. Forget everybody else. Because everybody here sucks. I mean, there's a Static X reunion. I don't know if anybody, if you pay attention to anything I put up, then you know that they got the guy from Dope 
to wear a mask, put you know, get his hair up like uh, Wayne Static, you know, sticking up, and he's got a braided uh, goatee thing, and but a mask with an X on it, Static X. So he looks like a you know zombie Wayne Static. It's cool. I think it's really cool, and he sounds just like him. So, uh, everywhere they play, they're playing theaters. They play L.A., they got to play a little dump in downtown L.A. But everywhere else, they're playing big, big places. Theaters, uh, well, not stadiums, but they're playing a lot bigger places than they are in L.A. Because, and they're, you know, basically an L.A. band, except for Wayne. He came out from the Midwest. So stupid. So it just occurred to me that, one, that's the biggest audience, my Hispanic audience, which there are a few. And uh, two, every band I was in had a guy that was either, you know, Cuban, Spanish, Mexican, and Guatemalan, whatever. My singer from Stiletto, uh, Spanish and Mexican. Spanish, uh or no, a Cuban mother and a Mexican father. And I, apparently, this is very important. They don't just say, you know, I'm this, I'm that. They, If there's a difference, they all point it out. My girlfriend taught me, you know. Her mother was Mexican. Her father was Spanish. I'm like, and what's the difference? You know, that was me a long time ago. Big difference. So, my singer, Rudy, Cuban mother, Mexican father. Uh, my J JD, my drummer, and Fatal Attraction. As far as I know, he's just a, a Mexican, you know, South American. I don't really know much because he didn't really talk about it, but his last name is Flores, so. Uh, and there was another guy I can't remember. Ah, actually, the bass player that replaced me when I quit Fatal Attraction the second time because I could not, you know, stand to watch it and fail and drop down into obscurity. He was Hispanic. So, a lot of... And, you know, if you go to an Iron Maiden concert here, you're in the minority. Like, three-quarters of the audience is Hispanic. It's just amazing. So, they've got the biggest... They're the true metalheads, still. So, that's what I'm doing. I'm like... Forget all this, because everybody, the guy in corn is making one now, and everybody kisses thinking about making a biopic, and see, so Queen did it, Motley Crue did it, and now everybody else is going to be trailing. They're jumping, so I've been trying to do this for years, almost as long as Motley Crue has been trying to get theirs out, and they finally had to get their friggin' uh, manager to make it. Which is a good idea, once again. Even though the whole thing is BS, it still got out there, and all of their record sales went up 200% in one month. And they made millions, millions. I heard, I think, 90 million off of Netflix, and the records is another whole... So, you know, Nikki's got six mansions in California. Just in California. Who's making money? Mm. So there you go. But that's where the audience is, so that's where I'm going. And, gosh, I can't think of a story. I mean, I've been, uh, for some reason, been hitting a lot of Lemmy stuff lately. And the only story I got is that one. I mean, we would talk when I'd see him at the Rainbow after that first time when he came over and, you know, wanted me to tell, you know, explain to him, how is it that you look like a girl, but you're getting all the girls? And I said, well, like, apparently it's, I'm beautiful, but I don't act like a girl. I'm a man. Plus, I have big, broad shoulders. I, but I was very skinny. I weighed like 150, 147, 150 pounds. You know, now I weigh like 220, 230. I'm a man. Here's a shirt. This guitar is represented somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's the, the one you can't see. This is that. So, I'm going to be playing my Concord. And, you know, I'm really glad I got it like this with just the body and neck painted and then took it and had it put it because this pickup just sounds unbelievable in this thing listen to the e it growls it sounds perfect it's a custom custom 
It's actually a custom. I had them wind it custom for me. I ain't going to give the specs out because then you'll get one. I don't care. If you want the, the specs, I can look them up. But it's actually a custom wound uh, Seymour Duncan by that lady. I can't remember her name, but I had to talk to her like three times. But, man, when I put it in this together with the, uh, I think this is maple, pretty sure. That's why, I, you know, yeah, this has got to be maple because that's why I got the star maple. Because he was getting it made at the same time. I got my star. Thank <laughs> you.